Hey, Mike here, AKA The Cloud Coach. Welcome to part six. In this part, we are going to create our EC2 instance. We're gonna create an output, which we'll see in a second, and then we're gonna SSH into our EC2 instance. So let's start coding. So what do we need? Well, we need another resource block. So if you remember, we created our data block last time, which is going out and fetching information. This time, we're not gonna fetch any information. We're actually gonna create something within AWS, and we're gonna call it web server. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in this block again, because there's a good, there's a good eight or nine fields that need to be filled in. And then I'm going to fast forward. Okay, so like magic, I fast forwarded and all this code just appeared. So we've got our AMI, which we're now pulling in from our data type, right? So we've used our data to go out and fetch an AMI and we're now calling it in data.aws underscore AMI dot Ubuntu dot ID. And that will actually get us the AMI ID. Every instance, easy to instance needs an AMI ID. We're going to place it in Sydney in AZA, which is the same AZ as our subnet, so it has to be in that AZ. We're also gonna change the uh, the instance type to be a T2 large, so that's just gonna set our type to large. We're gonna define what the SSH key is. Okay, we're gonna say, this is the SSH key I need you to go and use. We're also gonna say our VPC security group IDs, so just the security group that we're gonna to attach to the AWS EC2 instance, and in this case, it's gonna be AWS security group dot allow all dot ID. And then we're going to say, put it in that subnet. Okay. And I'm actually just reading this back to myself and reading it to you. I'm going to change this. I'm actually going to change this to AWS key pair dot ID. Okay. And the reason I'm going to do that is because, um, my apologies, that needs to be key underscore name is because I want the key. This is another way of creating a dependency within Terraform between two things. So if I'd have just left it as text, Terraform would have created the EC2 instance in parallel to the key because it doesn't necessarily know that those two things are linked together. So by saying, actually, go to your local resource called AWS Keeper default key name, right, and use the value there, it has to go out and create it first. So it creates a kind of implicit, expl sorry, explicit dependency on that key. All right, and I also promised you that we'd get an output and I didn't really explain what that meant. So now we're gonna do it now. So we're gonna create an output. And an output is how you tell Terraform to do one of two things. If this code is inside a Terraform module, something we will cover in a later course, the output will be available from a coding perspective. So it's available to use in other Terraform code if it's used in a non-module context like we're about to do, and you'll see the result of this context, it will actually just print it to the console. We're gonna say we want the public IP output to have the value of the, actually, sorry, Mark, not the ID, sorry, the public IP address of our Elastic IP. So once that's been provisioned, I want you, Terraform, to print that IP out for me. Now what happens if we validate I reckon what we're going to see is success and we, there we go we've got success so now what happens if we apply so it's going to go and check its local state check the remote state see what does and does not exist and then attempt to create what oh okay we actually have an issue so virtualization type so as you can see it didn't quite like that and the reason it's done that is because it's actually gone and spoken to the aws a api as you can see up here and the AWS API has come back 400, HTTP 400, that's invalid. Okay, so how do we fix it? Well, it's the American spelling, virtualization. Okay, so if we now repeat our reply, it will now talk to the API again. It'll say, give me the latest Ubuntu AMI, and then I'm gonna use it. So. Is it gonna work this time now that we've fixed that error? Well, let's see if it's happy with everything else. It is, it wants to add three, change zero, and destroy nothing. So it's gonna add a key pair. Okay, it's gonna add an EC2 instance. Okay, and it's gonna add an elastic IP and attach it to that instance. So let's go ahead and say yes and see what we end up with. Okay, so we've got our web server in place. We've got our EIP in place. And at the bottom, we actually do have an output. Look what we have. We literally have an IP address. Okay, what happens if we SSH to that to that IP? Do we want a finger? Yes, we do. 
we type in our password for our SSH key. I recommend you always put a password on your keys. And there we go, we're in. Okay, we're actually we're actually in. And if we look here, we can see hostname f. There's our hostname, our internal IP address of the instance, and we are good to go. So we've created an easy to instance. We've got its public IP, and we've SSH'd in. In the next part, what we're going to do, part seven, the final part of this crash course, we're actually going to destroy everything, and we're going to clean up. See you then.